Hey guys, this is Chris from the X, and welcome to another rendition of Praise Appraisal, where I determine if something is worth the praise or not worth the praise. Today I'm going to be looking at WWE All-Stars. Is it all it's cracked up to be? Well, let's find out. For those that don't know, I'm a huge fan of pro wrestling. Impact, AEW, AAA, you name it, unless it's WWE. I have been burned way too many times by them. However, WWE does have a yearly series of video games, originally having been published by THQ until its closure, leading to 2K becoming the publisher. Sadly, they haven't been that good, and even if 2K19 was the best one so far, that's not saying much. Still, I'm sure WWE 2K20 will be <laughs> oh, Who the hell? Holy crap, I didn't think it'd be this bad. How is the pre-order bonus not even ready for release? Of course, back when THQ had the publishing rights, they felt like changing things up a bit with a spin-off in WWE All-Stars. With a more arcade-like feel and over-the-top action, as if to poke fun at people who call wrestling too over-the-top to watch, movies would like a word with you. The game managed to be received rather well. However, eight years later, does it withstand the test of time? Well, that's what we're here to find out. This is WWE All-Stars. So to start things off, this ain't yo daddy's wrestling game, daddy. Oh wait, it is. As the game is a majorly different entry compared to the main series, with a bigger focus on an arcade feel rather than the realism that goes on with the mainline WWE games. For starters, everyone looks like they're roided out by Vince McMahon in the 90s. I can only wonder what Scott Steiner would look like in this. Man, you ain't big pop. I'm a big bad booty daddy in the non-stop. Now listen, English. Second, the gameplay focuses on the action being a sort of throwback to the old SNES and Genesis entries, as well as the arcade machines, with the true feeling of over the top action and maneuvers that would never work in real life, no matter how many ricochets and pox may try. They weren't kidding when they said not to try this at home. So the roster isn't too small, but not too big, with the likes of racist trumpling, racist homophobic evangelical, alleged murderer who used kayfabe to avoid trial twice, guy who, as far as I know, developed an actual addiction to alcohol and was abusive to two of the people he dated and cheated on his first wife, guy who came out of retirement to accept blood money from a murderous regime, I'll never be over this girl, and a sexual predator harassing new writers who WWE refuses to release or investigate because he's one of the Golden Boys. And he poops in co-workers' bags. There are four classes that each wrestler can have, being Grappler, which lets you do special grapples that usually result in a submission move or even a low blow for heels, among other things. Brawler, which can let you do a Shoryuken and some other things I failed to check, sorry. Big Man is, well, a big man, which can turn the ring into a trampoline, for everyone else that is, and then juggle them in the air, bust their gut, break their back, or my personal favorite, literally punting them out of the ring. And the one I have the most fun with and have played the most, the Acrobat class, which allows you to do springboard moves that can even launch the opponent into the ropes or the turnbuckle, with the ropes allowing you to also juggle them in the air or do a grapple to throw them around a bit more. The Acrobat class also has a backflip kick that, depending on the wrestler, can either allow you to come down on the opponent with a strike or grapple while in midair, or, with proper button timing, can kick off the opponent all the way to the turnbuckle to do yet another diving move. After how the match goes, there are two ways to win, as I don't think submission victories can happen. You can either pin them for the three count, or you can get their energy down until it's flashing red and Jim Ross goes every freaking time, and then use a finisher on them to get a KO victory. And they still pin them anyway, and in an egotistical fashion. Triple H must be proud. Also, this happened. Has been waiting for this Heartbreak Hitman, Brett Michaels! In addition to this, the way signature moves are done has you relying on a meter that doubles as a stamina bar, meaning you won't be able to run right away and you have to land a strike or a grapple to build it up. And since the meter doubles as a means to use signature moves, you have to decide whether to use a signature or save it and use the stamina for something else, even though those two things seem to be the only real things the meter is used for anyway, so it isn't as varied as it could have been. So as fun as the base game is, I also wanted to try and talk about the DLC, such as the ability to play as guys like R-Truth, Chris Jericho, and so on and so forth. However, as it turns out, when 2K acquired the WWE game's license, they delisted every THQ published WWE game, including ones that were digital only and are now listed as disc only on the PlayStation Store. Painful irony! And as a result, I couldn't buy the DLC that I don't have. As for what I do have, I wanted to show off our truth but it turns out that I encountered a bug with no real fix that I can find on the internet. With the bug being that our truth shows up as Michael Hayes, and it seems the only real way to fix this glitch is to get all the rest of the DLC, meaning I'd have to ask someone who bought them to share their account with me, 
but I'd potentially get banned, so that's out the window. Not to mention the fact that there was one fix where I had to download Pack 1 before Pack 2. Unfortunately, for whatever reason, the American Dream Pack ends up being downloaded automatically along with Pack 1, so that ends up going out the window too, in all fairness. Thankfully, THQ had some foresight, apparently, and had a 3DS version made with all the DLC included, with some bonus modes to play. First off is Score Scramble, where you try to get the highest score either within a time limit or just reach 50,000 points before the opponent does. Second is actually how you unlock the DLC characters in the Gauntlet match, where you have to fight the entire roster of the game. Your progress saves every three opponents, but it gets hard as heck in hell as time goes by. So there's no shame in putting in a button combo on the main menu to unlock everything. Unfortunately, you can't do this on the console version because they patched it out, and even if you end up deleting the update data to input the code, the update also removes the unlock content that you technically didn't already unlock through progression of the game, which in my opinion is a pretty low move to do to be honest. Not to mention without the update you can't play as any DLC characters. As for how our truth controls, he's like a Mexican jumping bean, being able to do a springboard dropkick and automatically bounce onto the top rope from it, and can even do so when running up and off the opponent onto the springboard rope, which by the way is technically a thing all acrobats can do but not on the rope itself, depending on if you press the right button. Unfortunately, I could not get it to work no matter how many times I tried, even though I've legit done it successfully on accident, but I'm just gonna guess that I remembered it wrong, so I just accepted I was wrong and went on about my life. Unlike Angry Joe's rapid fanbase. With Angry Joe following suit, because he's getting dangerously close to alt-right Nazi territory. Somebody save Angry Joe. Blitz. So I gotta be honest, there isn't exactly all that much more to the game in based on his core mechanics, as far as I can tell. I mean, it's still fun, it's just like, it's not very complex or deep. Though there is like a story mode that I did want to talk about. Sort of a story mode? It's hard to explain, really. Actually, no, it isn't me. So there are two game modes that let you unlock the rest of the roster and at least one alternate attire. First off is Fantasy Warfare, which has a superstar and a legend pitted against each other in a what-if rivalry, using footage of both wrestlers to make it seem like they were in an actual feud with each other. Although Eddie Guerrero vs. Rey Mysterio has the advantage of them actually having a feud in 2005, which was really messed up but also fun to watch by the way. Some of these also make you wonder how the hell WWE screwed up so many talents with how they were booked. Well, I'm sure they won't mess up Drew McIntyre again, right? 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 The second is Path of Champions, where you either go up against tag teams in order to face the Generation X for the Tag Team Championship, go up against a series of superstars in order to face Randy Orton for the WWE title, you see what I meant earlier, or a gauntlet of legends in order to face The Undertaker for the World Heavyweight Championship. The cutscenes for DX are surprisingly dull, and the humor just feels forced. It just doesn't seem to have the DX charm, to be honest. The Undertakers, though, are the best ones, largely because the late great Paul Bearer does most of the talking in his old talk show segment, The Funeral Parlor, as The Undertaker works on making a casket to throw you in. There's also, of course, this clip, which just reminds me how friggin' great Paul Bearer was as a manager. God, we miss you, Bill. Then there's Randy Orton's. There's a reason he was called Blandy Borton for a time. Hey, watch where you put that hand, asshole. I know where it's been. And yeah, that's really all I can really say about the WWE All-Stars, really. Redundant. So, how much praise do I think this is worth? If I had to be honest, recording the gameplay for this game is arguably the most fun I've had with a WWE video game in ages. It feels like actual love and effort actually went into this game even, actually. Redundant again. If I had to recommend a specific version, it depends. If you want to play with friends and don't care about not getting the DLC, get the home console version on PS3 or Xbox 360. I can't speak for the Wii or PS2 versions, though. If you prefer it portable and on your own, get the PSP or even the 3DS version. Though, if you want all the DLC, the 3DS version is the way to go. No matter which version you choose, though, you're guaranteed to have a goddamn blast. <laughs> you know, maybe it was a bit too harsh on WWE. You know what, let's see what they're up to now. Mm -hmm.